The perk Ammo-Matic was actually cut from Call of Duty Zombies. It would have been on Shinonuma and Duris, and it would have allowed players to buy max ammos for 10,000 points. That sounds pretty insane. In World at War, Juggernaug originally had a different perk jingle. I don't know why this one was cut, it sounds pretty cool. There's plenty more cut things in the rest of this video, including entire Zombies maps cut, and a crazy boss zombie that never appeared. Let's continue. The power station from Transit was supposed to be its own survival map. The map selection icon is still in the game, they just covered it up with a bunch of fog. Tough Brew was a perk that got cut from zombies. It would have released in Black Ops 1, and there's two things that it could have done. It could have doubled the player's bullet penetration, or given explosive damage resistance. One more perk cut from BO1 was Candelier. It would have given the player extra reserve ammo, like how Bandelier Bandit works in Black Ops 4. There was an entire map that got cut from BO1 called Temple of Doom. This name was found in the files of the Escalation DLC, which actually released the map Call of the Dead. Speaking of cut maps, in Black Ops 4 there was supposed to be two more Chaos Story maps. One was called Morocco, and the other was called Russia. There weren't many details about them, but having more Chaos maps would have been pretty cool. Something else cut in BO4 were Zombie Factions. The four factions were called Blood Faith, Temper Snowy, Dust Spawn, and the First Legion. They would have allowed players to complete challenges and earn exclusive rewards like calling cards or cosmetics. A trap called the Chopper was supposed to be in Doris. To me, it sounds like it would have looked something like this, but we'll never really know. The M2 Flamethrower would have made a return in Black Ops 1 before it was cut. In-game files suggest that it would have been on 5 and Kino Der Toten. Another cut weapon in Black Ops 1 was the Sabertooth. This was supposed to be a chainsaw which would have had a magazine size of 999 and a reserve size of 999,000. This probably means that it would have used gas and burned through the ammo number quite quickly. Pronade was a perk that also would have released in Black Ops 1, but it got cut and combined into PhD Flopper. All it would have done was allow the player to prone quicker, so we're probably not missing much here. Boom Juice and DPT Boom, however, were two perks that also got merged into PhD Flopper, and they were a little better. Boom Juice would have given the player explosive rounds, and DTP Boom would have done the nuke explosion when prone. Both sound kinda OP if you ask me. There was supposed to be a zombies map set in Paris, but it was scrapped and later reworked into the map Moon. The evidence of this is in the files because Moon's name is zombie underscore Paris. There were two different game modes that would have been in BO2. The first one was race. Kill the necessary amount of zombies to open your door and progress to the end. First team to make it wins. It would have taken place in the transit tunnel, and it sounds pretty fun. The second one was meat. Grab the meat and throw it. Zombies will only attack you if your side has the meat. Don't die and you might just win. This one would have been on town, but it sounds a little weird. Sal, Finn, and Billy had cut announcer quotes in Mob of the Dead. Take a listen. Carpenter! Double points! Instacam! Max ammo! Cop! Boom! Fire Sam! Speaking of Mob of the Dead, originally there was going to be individual easter eggs for each character, but the idea was later scrapped. There were supposed to be character outfits in Black Ops 3. It basically just would have been skins for the three zombies crews in the game, the Shadows of Evil, Primus, and Ultimus crews, and they would have been unlocked with XP. Also in BO3, there were going to be zombie difficulties. Survivor would have been the easiest, Hunter would have been medium, and Exterminator would have been the hardest. This this sounds pretty cool because one thing that BO3 is missing is a difficulty slider, whereas in BO2 and BO4 there was always some way to customize your difficulty. Liquid Divinium used to be called Let It Ride tokens in pre-alpha BO3. Thank goodness they changed this because Let It Ride tokens doesn't really roll off the tongue too smoothly. Gobblegums were also going to be called something completely different. It would have been Mega Chew Bubble Blast or Bubblegum Buffs. And again, thank goodness they changed it. There were also a few gobblegum ideas that got cut. Brainiac, Center of Attention, Firestarter, Melee Master, and Toxic Vindicator. There's no information on what they could have done, but more gobblegums could have been cool. Liquicity was a BO3 perk that got cut early on. It would have allowed the player to swim faster in water, and specifically in Zetsubo no Shima. It was probably cut because they realized that there wasn't that much swimming in Zetsubo where a player would need a perk for it. Honey Business was an alternate ammo type supposed to be in BO3. It would have been very 
similar to the multiplayer B's specialist weapon called the Hive. For Revelations, there's announcer lines for Dr. Monty and the Shadow Man, but they never appeared in the game. Take a listen. Kaboom! Double points. Minigun. Max Ammo. Carpenter. Insta-kill. It would have been cool to have them as announcers. In Black Ops 4, there was a grief mode planned. Presumably, it would have been like the BO2 grief mode where teams fight to be the last one standing, but who knows for sure. Juggernaut was actually cut from Black Ops 4 zombies because Treyarch wanted to eliminate crutch perks. It would have increased the maximum health by 100, and maybe solved some issues that some fans had with BO4. Speed Cola was also cut for the same reason as Jug, but Community Backlash made Treyarch put it in the game as a secret perk if a player had all four perks bought. Players were also going to be able to craft their elixirs and talismans, similar to the Newton's Cookbook in BO3. That definitely would have been nice to have. This new boss zombie was also intended to be in Black Ops 4, but it got cut for unknown reasons. It looks like it could have been this huge Hulk-like zombie, but little information is known. There was also supposed to be more seasons in BO4 and a second Black Ops Pass. There was going to be six new seasons, which is basically year two of Black Ops 4, and presumably four new Zombies maps. If this happened, that would have been crazy. There was also supposed to be something called Treyarch Custom Mutations. It would have been weekly custom settings released by Treyarch, and player progression, challenges, and easter eggs would have been enabled. This would have been a cool feature because normally custom mutations make the player get no progression. Cold War Zombies almost had custom mutations similar to how Black Ops 4 had them. It looks like the players could customize their game rules how they wanted, which would have been pretty cool. In Call of Duty World at War, there was only three DLCs, but a fourth one was planned and then cut. It was supposed to be Kino der Toten, but Treyarch determined that it would have released too close to Modern Warfare 2, so they pushed it back to Black Ops 1. The map 5 was supposed to have the Wonderwaff and Hellhounds, but it instead got the Pentagon Thief and the Winter's Howl. A pretty good upgrade overall. The jet gun was originally going to be upgradable. It would have lasted longer and done more damage. This would have been huge because because it probably would have made the jet gun not break after 10 seconds of firing it. Richtofen's head was supposed to be a power-up in grief. It would have been a throwable and would have been able to be stuck to players, and whoever it was stuck to, the zombies would chase that player. Transit had a separate version made that was set before Moon, meaning before the Earth was blown up. This version would not have had fog, the denizens, or a bunch of lava. The baby gun was going to have four alternate power sources. This image is the only evidence that there is, and not much is explained about what it could mean, but it looks like it would be pretty cool. There was an unreleased Pack-a-Punch jingle that was actually way longer and told a full story. Take a listen. Make a dance, stick your weapon in the slot, and let it change your luck. Few things in life are guaranteed, but I promise this won't suck. Punch your fists into the air and raise a rebel yell. There's lots of bad out there. Thanks for watching. Watch another video.